Hey friends, thank you for being with me today. I realize we're in our 19th year, consecutive year of doing Know the Cause. Why do I do what I do? Toward the end of the show, I'll fill you in. But opening today, is it lung fungus or is it lung cancer? Uric acid and your gout, your high uric acid levels. What does that mean? I hope to teach you a little bit. Dr. Greg Emerson, a physician all the way from Brisbane, Australia, talks about your vitamin D levels. Then another physician, Dr. Christine Salter, says, you know what? I figure out the cause of my patient's problems, not just Medicaid. All that and more on this Know the Cause. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. Over my shoulder here are the words, three words, know the cause. Understand why that lump grew. Understand why your back hurts so bad or you have ringing in the ear because your doctor doesn't. Your doctor is there to treat it with a medication or a treatment. Um, in the case of lung cancer, folks, look at this headline I, I pulled out here just earlier, Annals of Thoracic Surgery, this is a big uh, surgical journal, aggressive surgery is the best treatment option for early lung cancer. You got that? Aggressive surgery is the best treatment option. You mean there are options for early lung cancer. So when we see something on a CT scan, get in and pull it. Start surgery. And cut a lobe out of the lung. Hold on, big guys. Is that really cancer at all? Instead of hitting the accelerator, might we push the clutch and the brake in? and slow down. Doctor, I lived with parakeets. Could histoplasmosis, the fungus in parakeet poop, could that be looking like, could it be growing a lump in my chest? Uh, doctor, we moved into an old turn of the century home and I've been sick since. Um, could the mold in that home be growing a bubble in my chest? Is that really cancer? Doctor, I never smoked it again. You know, blah, 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 doesn't matter if smoke, we don't understand, go ahead and we're gonna cut it out for, hold on. I've never seen a hustle like I see when someone sees a lump or a bump on an x-ray. So get this, lung cancer misdiagnosis, so says the American Journal of this is Radiologists, August of 2013, even in patients with clinical and radiological findings suspicious for cancer, radiologists should be aware of other diagnoses including fungal infections. As I read this report, it may be a small number, but tens of thousands of lung cancers are diagnosed every month. So if it's 2%, 10%, 15%, huge number are found to have fungus growing in them, and they're not cancer at all. But boy, aggressive surgery. Let's, ooh, 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 I feel a lump. Jim, can you see this woman today? Can you pull that lump out? Can you believe it, folks? I am of the opinion, cancer and all disease, diabetes, what is pre-diabetes? Come on, it's like being pre-pregnant. Um, pre-diabetes, they say 86 million Americans have. I might be one of them, but I ain't going. I'm not getting my blood sugar checked after I drank a soda pop, two beers, and ate a sandwich. You know. Bottom line is we are over-diagnosing lung cancer. I'm teaching doctors that now with some very good results, as you've seen here on Know the Cause. Look at this. This is a slide I've given to cancer specialists two years in a row. It comes out of a very respected journal called Lung in the year 2013. A case series was presented of 27 patients initially diagnosed both clinically and radiologically. I'm going to go backwards. Even in patients with clinical and radiologic findings, now I'm going forward, a case series was presented of 27 patients diagnosed both clinically and radiologically with primary or secondary lung cancer. These later proved to be lung cancer, I'm sorry, lung fungal infections, not lung cancer, and all 27 patients responded well to antifungal therapy. Okay, I want to go backwards here. Aggressive. Should we be more aggressive in testing that tumor? Should we not do a biopsy with a needle and send it off, grow it on a petri dish for a couple of weeks and see if it's lung fungus like it probably is? Why aggressive surgery? 
There's $82 in testing it for fungus. I wonder what an aggressive lobectomy costs when we first see signs of cancer on an x-ray. Just my thought. Hey friends, so many people, almost half of all Americans have what they call type 1, type 2, or pre-diabetes. I love that word. We all have pre-some disease, then we're in line at the drugstore, right, for our medications. Um, so maybe half of all Americans have diabetes or will have diabetes, etc. Of those, a huge percentage have gout, right? The big toe disease. What we used to cause, call gout, you know, 50 years ago is the beer drinker's disease. Well, it does take a genius to put together what is beer, right? Brewer's yeast is the mold, and the mycotoxin it makes is called ethanol or alcohol. So you're drinking mycotoxins, and then uh, you can't understand why you have diabetes. You're drinking alcohol. can't understand why the pancreas doesn't work. And then you can't understand why your uric acid level that tells the doctor how bad you have gout is over 4.0. So let's study a little bit about gout and diabetes, right? Here we go. So this I thought was fascinating. Go with me on this, because this has taken me years to put together. Way back since 1877, when I first met Dr. Whip. He observed that people with diabetes also had gout. Today, of course, we know that to be fact. But look, hundreds of years ago, in 54, Griffiths discovers that uric acid caused diabetes in animals. But where in the world does uric acid come from? Beer. Slivia, or Sylvia, or whatever his name is. I spelled it right, I just can't pronounce it. Let's see. Zvia discovers that brewer's yeast makes uric acid. Be still my heart. And yet we are putting these yeasts into things like kombucha and kefir. Is that okay? It makes uric acid, right? How do you make uric acid? How do you get gout? Brewer's yeast. Where's brewer's yeast? It's being put in a lot of things recently, okay? Saccharomyces cerevisiae. In 1990, not long ago in my lifetime, of course, 1788 was in my lifetime, in 1990, Dr. Coleman discovers that mice fed a 10% diet of beer, oops, I mean brewer's yeast, develop diabetes. 2015, I love this when the diabetes organization says this. Most people with diabetes can have a moderate amount of alcohol. May I define that for you? They all say a moderate amount of drinking is probably okay, right? Except the American Oncology. A couple of months ago, they said, ah, probably one drink a day isn't okay. High five oncologists. Cancer doctors finally get it, what heart doctors and others don't. Two drinks a day for men, one drink a day for women. Well, we poured those into a five-gallon drum, those two beers a day for men, and we came out five and a half gallons of beer a month. Gee, I can't figure out why my big toe hurts. You know what, Doug? My cholesterol's 300. I don't get it. You know what I don't get? Why I have diabetes. Why do I have to be pitted with diabetes the rest of my life? Listen to me. If you're pouring five gallons of mycotoxins into your body, don't think you're not going to end up with a disease, okay? I believe that's wrong. Alcohol is a mycotoxin of brewer's yeast. Diabetics might wish to refrain. That's a nice way of saying, please stop now from all alcohol. As you have learned, some mycotoxins cause diabetes. We know that to give laboratory animals diabetes, we inject either baflomycin or streptozotocin, two antibiotics, into them they all get diabetes over a period of time. Are you injecting fungal mycotoxins like alcohol or antibiotics into yourself? Think about that if you have a serious disease. Don't go away. We'll be back with more. Now, a couple of extraordinary doctors, number one, all the way from Brisbane, Australia, Dr. Greg Emerson. What are your vitamin D levels and how important are they? And then after that, physician Christine Salter says, all patients want is fixed. Watch. This is critical to understand. I can't stress this enough. Low vitamin D levels reveal a deficiency in sunlight, not just vitamin D. This cannot be fixed just with a vitamin D supplement. Sure, you may get a better number on a blood test, but you will miss out on all the other myriad benefits of exposure to full spectrum sunlight. That includes the morning and evening infrared light, which stimulates retinal cells in the eye to signal the hypothalamus. This signaling switches off melatonin production and turns on daytime energy hormone production. The midday ultraviolet light then produces massive amounts of vitamin D on a controlled feedback loop, 
which is otherwise missing with vitamin D supplements. Sunlight, it's what we've used for 2.5 million years. It cannot be replaced. It's free, so get out into it. This is Dr. Greg Emerson with Doug Kaufman at Know The Cause in the great Lone Star state of Texas. There is my good friend, Dr. Christine Salter, all the way from St. Louis. Uh, we lectured together just a few weeks ago, um, and the joy hasn't stopped. I mean, if you give a doctor information about fungus for his family, he can help his family. But if you teach a doctor about fungus, and you just did this in Tucson, um, he can feed his patients, That's he right. helps his patients. Right. Did you think three years ago, kind of 2014 or so, when we met, okay, there might be one patient that fits into this, you know, right. kind of the vaginal yeast, ringworm, toenail right. fungus, and you're, did you think that originally? I didn't think I'd be doing things where I'm today. Right, right? exactly. Where, where you look at me, you realize it's just so pervasive, right? I mean, now now my, my history taken is now taken in the context of fungal exposure, okay. and then just pull in the other information. It, it, it's so pervasive. It, it's funny, we have found a home run in 1952 with antibiotics, and we grossly overdid it. Even physicians, even right. physicians' journals uh, say that we have overdone antibiotics. Oh, well, yes. Um, and they can't stop, it's like an addiction. We have to right. prescribe antibiotics. But we're causing dysbiosis, number one, in the gut. gut. What else happens when you treat a fungal problem with an antibiotic? Well, you, you cause a dysbiosis, you cause resistance mm. to, to the, or, yeah, you, you, you know, and when you really do need the antibiotic, you don't have it. And it's not just the doctor's fault because the patients come in and they're just like, oh, I know what I need. I mean, I've got this same sinus infection and the only thing that's gonna take care of this is this antibiotic. <sighs> And then now we've got to pause and then re-educate the patient. You know, was it Mayo says that, you know, chronic sinus infections are actually fungal infections. Yep. But what happens, there's a biofilm that's formed. So you may have some bacteria there. Right, exactly. That if you give an antibiotic, you feel better, but only for a short period of time. And then the fungus just then explodes. And I can just tell them exactly what's going to happen. Are know. they there to have a, see, you have a concierge practice. This is a little bit different. <laughs> Are they there to have their fire put out or to know the cause? Are they there to learn about why I'm talking like this for 12 years? Do you go back? Hey, let's walk back 13 years. Where'd you live? Oh, we had a beautiful home. We sold it and we moved. My parents loved antique homes, so we moved into right. a thousand-year-old home. And then this be I mean, do you do that with them? Yes, yeah. Um, to most people who come to me, because it is a concierge practice, you know, we don't take insurance. Okay. So they're spending, yep. you know, money, right. okay, hard-earned money, out of pocket. So for the most part, they want to know the cause. They, they, they don't okay, want good. a Band-Aid. Yeah. You know, Band-Aids can be okay temporarily as long as you are looking for the cause. You know, I look at insurance cards as a get-out-of-jail-free card. You're going in to get, become asymptomatic. Look, my shoulder really hurts, so I'm going to take a drug. How did that insurance card help you? Wouldn't it be cool to learn that the bathroom tub right behind your headboard has been leaking and that's why your shoulder hurts? The fact right. that pain can be induced by mold, that's a little strange for most people, right? Right, and they, they, they don't understand. Again, it's, a, it's an educational process to, to, to let them know all the different aspects of what mold can do. Do people resist the phase diets in your office? In other words, you tell them, look, we're gonna cut grains out, I don't, no more pizzas, you know, no more sugar, no more grains, no more corn. Do they resist, oh, well, they're concierge, so they're there to absorb, to learn. Right, but, and they do want to learn, but it's, sometimes it is, you know, pe people are addicted to sugar and they're addicted to the carbs. And it's not that carbs are so bad, it's the excessive use of carbs. But we still have to do That's that right. phase one diet and get it out. Yeah. And then we can then gradually reintroduce the healthier carbs, you know, that they can handle, but they've got to pull it out in yeah. the first place. That, and that's the difficult part. The three M's in cancer care today are mitochondria, marijuana, and mushrooms. Isn't that interesting? Right. Right. Really studying mushrooms and marijuana, but the mitochondria you still contend is a big deal. It's a, it's a huge deal. And the things that affect the mitochondria, lifestyle, 
toxins, environmental toxins, biological toxins. Yeah. It's the same story, it's a the different fungi. song, right? You're right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Thank I really you. admire you. By the way, it's drsalter.com, D-R-S-A-L-T-E-R.com. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek, here with The Cancer Connection. Lycopene is a powerful antioxidant and a natural food pigment. It's found in fruits and vegetables like tomatoes, apricots, guavas, and watermelons. Laboratory and animal studies have shown that lycopene may lower your risk of prostate, skin, breast, lung, and liver cancers. A key area of research that has been done is on prostate cancer. The National Institutes for Health report that prostate cancer cells, when treated with lycopene, had changes in their cell division cycle, which led to less cancer cell growth. So how can we increase our consumption of lycopene? Lycopene is more bioavailable and easier for the body to absorb when it comes from things like tomato paste and tomato puree, as opposed to raw tomatoes. Another study showed that lycopene was absorbed much better when used with diced tomatoes, and you cook those diced tomatoes with olive oil than when you just cook them without that olive oil. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. You know, many of you see me on TV, and I thank you so much for that. Others watch me on Facebook. Why did we start the Facebook segment? It's live 3 to 4 p.m. each Tuesday and Thursday. I sit right here on the set and I answer your questions. You type in email, you know, your questions, and I try and answer them, understanding I'm not a doctor. But what would Doug do if he had this problem going on? And I get testimonials you can't believe. Why do I teach what I teach? Why have I been doing this, sitting on this desk for 19 years? Let me just tell you, when I got this from Mike and Sue, my son went to the doctor four different times for pain and skin irritation. All they did was prescribe antibiotics, uh, which didn't help. We told him about you and your diet after three weeks on your Kaufman One diet. He feels so great, and he's off the antibiotics. Thank you, Doug. Folks, I have published on diabetes, on Alzheimer's, on cancer, and their intimacy with fungus. See, fungus isn't like bacteria. Once bacteria is on board, you can run a fever, your white blood count will go, you feel achy and so forth, and the antibiotic kills the bacteria. It's a different thing because once fungus is on board, they spew a poison inside your body. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple hundred fungi that can do this now, we now know. Out of the millions that exist, a couple hundred of them can make you very, very sick. And so many years ago, I was working in clinics with doctors, and the exciting thing is to see a psoriasis patient, maybe a 14-year-old kid who's so embarrassed to go to school, and then a month later, after antifungal medicines and my diet, the Kaufman diet, he's cleared up. He's so happy. Other people with migraine headaches, menstrual problems, arthritis, etc. Fungus is the root cause of a whole lot of illness. People ask me, what do you do? Well, I have a TV show. I host a show called Know the Cause. Then I do a little Facebook work and so forth. How long have you done it? Almost 20 years. You've been on TV for almost 20 years. Folks, here's the great thing. You've gotten to see me get old. 20 years ago, I had dark hair. You know, I was sitting here probably in a pair of slacks and a sport coat. Totally different. But I'm still beating the same drum. Fungus is that important. I'm now teaching doctors several courses I've given in the last few years. They get continuing medical education. I'm teaching them cancer and the role of fungus. You saw this morning. Yeah, it looks like lung cancer. But what about those 27 patients who didn't have lung cancer? Oh, they were all diagnosed with lung cancer. They were all going on standard chemotherapy and drugs, 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 drugs. But they never had cancer. They had lung fungus. That lump in your breast, the prostate nodule, are those things really cancer? That's what this show really addresses. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to prescribe nor relegate what your life's going to be like. All I'm asking you to do is change for a period of time and see if, in fact, a month later, by changing your diet, those annoying symptoms or those dangerous symptoms don't get better. Right? So in answer to your question, why do I teach? 
what I teach. Nobody, nobody says it better than Olivia. My name is Olivia. Um, I had precancer cells, um, dysplasia, and then I also had signs of carcinoma on my cervix. And when they found that, they also found a yeast overgrowth. And they told me that I had HPV virus and that I was supposed to be getting surgery to have it either removed or a total hysterectomy. But they were going to do further testing. So they did more testing. There's still no nothing that they could do and they said that we're just going to have to remove it. There's nothing I can change with my diet. And then I saw Doug Kaufman's TV show and I did the phase one diet and I alkalized my body, cut out sugar, cut out dairy, gluten, soy, and I came back six months later and the cancer cells are gone, completely gone. I don't have any more yeast problems. I'm not tired. I mean, it's just when you heal your body, you don't just heal one thing, you heal everything. And I mean, I'm going to stick to this diet. I just quit my job. I'm actually going to school for nutrition. <laughs>